Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this Union Jack bunting. As it's King Charles's coronation coming soon, I thought this would be a fun thing to do for the model railway. And here's how I did it. Okay, so I first did a Google search for Union Jack bunting and I found this A4 template. I saved the image from that template into a downloads folder and I'll put a link in the description to this template. But don't worry about this entire process if you don't want to go through this yourself. I will tell you later on in the video where you can find my completed bunting template where you can just cut the bunting out and then mount it on your layout. Right, so I found the file I downloaded and I've loaded it into preview on my Mac. And the task now is to actually cut one of these flags out because what we want to do is cut one out and then paste it into a Word document. So I'm using the lasso function in this software and I'm just going to go around one of the flags and mark it out and then make it into an image of its own. So round a go, keep going, keep going up the top and it should be done now. So now let's make it its own image by copying it and then pasting it as a new image and here we go. So it doesn't matter if it's a bit rough around the edges. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to save it into a downloads folder where I can find it. So I'm just going to give it a name. So we're going to call this Union Bunting Flag and then we're going to hit save. Right, next job is to start a new Microsoft Word document import the picture and then shrink it down to the size I want. That's it. And then what we'll do is highlight it and then copy and paste it to get a row of flags. Then what we'll do is select the entire row, copy it and then paste it across the whole entire sheet of A4 paper. So after I've saved this document, I'm then going to print it and I'm going to print it on this photogloss paper. Now you could print on normal plain paper or printable card. It depends what you have available. It's personal choice. So I've chosen this paper to give it a nice high gloss finish. So once it's printed and the ink's dry, we can now go and cut the bunting out. And here it is ready to cut. So what I'm gonna use is this steel rule and a craft knife with a nice sharp blade. So I'm just gonna cut above the flags at the top. First of all, I'm gonna cut one row out. So when you're doing this, always cut away from you. Keep your fingers out of there. The knob blades way. So I've cut the top off, left a little white line at the top because we need the bunting to stay joined. And then I'm going to cut this entire row out. Put it to one side and then move the rest of the sheet safely out of the way. Right, so now we're ready to cut the little flags out individually. We must keep that white line a white bar at the top and I'm going to start by cutting off the ends just makes it a bit easier to cut the rest of it cutting along the flag and a really nice sharp blade does help so now I'm going to cut each flag out but I'm not going to travel too far because what I don't want to do is sever the flag from the bunting one cut here and another cut here Sometimes this little white bit will drop out. Sometimes it will stay connected, but we can pull it off at the end. So here we can see the bunting is still connected, which is what we want. So let's cut this one out and then we're going to move on. I'm not going to show you me cutting the entire row of bunting out. Right, so I've cut all the uh, flags out now. So I've just got to pull some of these remaining bits off. So what we do is support where I'm going to pull it off from and just give it a little twist and a pull. Because what we still, again, don't want to do is sever the flags. I'm going to do this for the entire row. You could use the bunting as is, but what I'm going to do is put a bead of PVA tacky glue across the top of the back of the bunting. And then I'm going to apply a length of fine cotton and then leave it to dry and this will just strengthen the bunting so you can move it and so it just doesn't break off easily because after all it is still only a uh, photo paper 
and it hasn't got much holding it together at this point. So applying a thin bit of glue across the back and just spot any holes that I might have caused while not <laughs> maintaining a good bead all the way across. That's it, so we're done. Put the lid back on the glue and now to find the cotton. Here's some here. So let's uh, put it on. So I just need to cut it to an over length to start with. This will just makes it a bit easier to work with. And now it's time to put it in the bead of glue. So I'm just going to drop it in gently, just working to begin with. And then I'm going to find a bit of off cut photo paper and just press the cotton into the glue. So I'm doing that all the way along. Just a slight dab, I don't want to move it or get the glue on the cutting mat and then cause the bunting to stick to the mat. Okay, there we have it, the length of cotton has been applied. So now I'm just going to move this out of the way to dry. And you could do the entire sheet at once, but I'm not going to do that, we're just going to go straight onto the next stage. So I've left the glue to dry overnight and you've now got a nice strong support or stronger support for the bunting. And the next stage is just to cut the ends of the cotton off. So again, with the uh, craft knife, always following the uh, knife safety instructions, cut away from you and removing the lengths of cotton at the end. And there we go, job done. So the next step is to actually attach the bunting to the buildings on the layout. And to do that, I'm going to use white tack. So what I'm going to do is put a small amount of white tack on each of the ends of this row and one in the middle. Now you don't have to use white tack, you can use blue tack or whatever you use, just make sure it's not going to be too strong that when you take the bunting off your buildings or wherever you put it on your layout, it's not going to cause any damage. And I found white tack, if you just do it really softly, hasn't caused any problems for me. So there we go, white tack applied. Now let's take this to the layout. Okay, so as you can see, I've already applied some of the bunting along the canopy of the platform, and I've just got one bit at the end to do. So here we go. So it looks all good so far, with just this end point to do. Let's finish it. Okay, here we go. So just line it up at this end, push the white tack in very, very gently, push it again in the middle, and then curve this last flag around the end of the canopy, and again push very lightly. And that's it. Job done. All the bunting applied to the uh, station. And I think it looks pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to my bunting template. So if you don't want to create it yourself, you can just download my template and print it. And all I'll say now is thanks for watching.